Greetings, interwebs. It is I, Hewlett, David Hewlett here with another audio awesome for you. This week, I'm going to be reading you the email of awesome awesomeness, as I always do. This is a molecular dance of awesome this week. I'm a bit obsessed with molecular biology, I got to say. It used to be silicone and electronics, a list for that matter. More recently, I've become fascinated with this amazing processes that make life possible. I have read books on it. I've done I've done whole courses on biology now, just trying to understand some of it. It's just unbelievably cool to me that you even have a, a chance of comprehending some of the processes that are happening like this, especially a high school dropout like me. The problem with biology is there's just so much, well, so much damn biology. <laughs> the amount of information that you need to know before you get to the how stuff works uh, is a big reason why I think Biology gets a, gets a bad name. Certainly for me, it was it seemed overwhelming to me. There's just so much memorization required to get the context you need to get to the fun stuff. Uh, what I've discovered in my interweb meanderings is that I keep finding these extraordinary animations by a guy called Drew Berry. And I really wanted to look into this a bit more. I found some very cool videos for you to look at, one of which is actually Drew Berry talking about the whole process. And it, the thing about his work is that it's just so good at cutting through all this biological information and showing us how these processes work. And I was delighted, of course, being the education nerd that I am, that all of this amazing molecular biology was inspired by video games. How freaking cool is that? Not only that, 1987 Amiga video games. So I've got a great video here, which is an ad for the original Amiga back in 1987, which you can check out just to try to capture that. That wonderful excitement that we felt back then. You'll probably find it funny, but I, I literally found myself going like, I want an Amiga again. Drew Barry fell in love with gaming and animation on his 1987 Amiga. So he was inspired by games like Xenon 2 Mega Blast, which is this amazing, amazing it, it's, it consists of all of these amazing, creepy, Cambrian-inspired creatures that have been apparently mutated by alien, alien bomb radiation. It, that's what made the connection between computers and biology for him. Not to mention it has this amazing Bomb the Bass soundtrack, which you have to check out. Again, I've got links in there of a full gameplay, which you should check out. And, uh, and the soundtrack as well, if you want to look into that. There's, a, there's an interesting story about that, too. The, the Bitmap brothers who, who made that game and stuff. I'm sure there's, there's a story in there, too, I should look into. But anyways, Drew ended up getting a job at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute for Medical Research, which I'm not sure how the Aussies would say this. Australians out there, let me know. Is it WEHI? That's how I would call it. W-E-H-I. It's Australia's oldest medical research institute. And he was their Photoshop guy, as he puts it. He was he was out there, you know, jazzing up images for, from the labs to prepare for scientific journals. And he was so good at it and so quick at it that, that he ended up with a lot of time to himself. So he thought, what could I be doing? Well, why don't I try animating some of these scientific discoveries? And so he starts animating these complex biological processes. And, and in doing so, he gets to use all these video game cool tips and technical programming and design approaches that these video game designers had done way back in 1987. He, he sort of made that connection, started using them together. And it's just, it's really, you know, it's, there is, it's as compelling and as beautiful, if not more so than the, than the video games that, that inspired this stuff. And he's also, his realization that sound was so important in these games as well. So he's been including some ingenious sound effects and like squishy sounds and, and, and music as well. Some choral stuff that he's done. You can really check out the video where he talks about this process because it's just extraordinary. So the animations he went on to create were just gorgeous. I mean, then again, so is, so is biology. So Drew Barry has made a clear point to point out that uh, these animations are as accurate as possible based on its amazing mix of, of existing research. That involves the protein database, PDB, molecular dynamic simulations, and cryo-electron tomography, cryo-ET. Here are some seriously cool technologies in here that he's working with. Protein database, you've got to check out because it is, it is this marvel of mesmerizing 3D proteins and nucleic acids, all in this online database that is accessible to everybody. So you go check out the 3D forms of all of these amazing molecules. You'll just be blown away. It's 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 just it's 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 kind of 
you find yourself just getting hypnotized by this stuff. It's 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 extraordinary. Uh, Cryo ET is another technology to to talk about. This is a complete breakthrough when it comes to looking at, at especially biological molecules. So micro science punks, as I like to call them, freeze their samples so quickly that the water in them doesn't have time to crystallize and destroy them. Normally, like my freezer is full of just horribly damaged freezer burned meats and stuff that I'll, I'll eat later, I'm sure. Uh, and you don't want that to happen with these samples because you want them as pristine as possible when you start putting them under microscopes. So they can freeze them so fast, crazy cold temperatures, very, very quickly, freeze them solid. They then slice these icy samples, coat them with platinum gas to stop the sample from getting charged while they fire electron beams at it. Beams of electrons that have been focused by magnetic rings and they use all of this process to create images. These images are, are created as they tilt the sample back and forth to create a series of 2D images, which can then be processed by fabulous computer technologies far beyond the Amiga 1987 into 3D images that we can look at and explore. And it is just an absolutely magical process <laughs> to watch. And there's a video I've included here um, by one of the microscopic companies that have gone through the process of, of, of telling you how this thing works. And it's just, man, so cool. Verisodium, I don't know if that's the right name for this YouTuber, has uh, a, this wonderful video that covers all the gory details of the, specifically Drew's animation of the DNA at work. And it just walks you through each part of this animation and explains what they all are. It is just, oh, magnificent. It just, you get so much information with these things. There has been some criticism about simplifying all this squishy, random biological processes into the idea of them just being simple machines. Because uh, well, it's just not that simple. There is a, there's a, a randomness, a jiggle, a gelatinous, spaghetti-like nature to all of this. And it is this chaos that probably informs a lot of the processes as well. For example... Some of these uh, molecules will actually moonlight as and do other jobs as well as the main jobs that we sort of know them for. They will actually change shape and will reconfigure to do this stuff. So it's very hard to sort of say, oh, it's a machine. Uh, that That's a very jiggly, wobbly machine that can do 10 different things. It, it just, I think the concern is that we don't want to oversimplify it because that might might not give us a purely accurate understanding of what's going on. Um, now, you know, Drew points out that his goal is not to recreate the processes um, exactly, but just as accurately as possible. But he wants people to be able to visualize what's going on. So he's going to take some liberties. It's impossible, for example, to include every sort of wiggle and jiggle of molecules in these vast seas of random motion. So Drew's animations acknowledge the chaos, but reduce the processes, simplify them a little bit to a level that demonstrates what's happening in a way that even school kids and hell... You know, even TV geniuses or TV only geniuses like myself can understand. It's uh, it's it's an amazing work, Drew. Very much appreciated. I just love, I personally, I just love the fact that video games are what inspired this. That a bunch of you know nature inspired Cambrian attackers is what launched this passion for creating these wonderful reenactments of what's happening in in, in the very the very horror of life uh, it's just it's molecular biology at its best and i and i love seeing this kind of crossover between computers and biology and gaming and music i mean just these all these it's literally steam in action the science technology engineering arts and math all together creating these beautiful beautiful and speaking of animations tech bandits reporter of awesome mpg has once again dug up an amazing kurtzkasat video for us a video i might add that had such great experts as Prof. Dr. James R. Gurney, Tick Bandit's uh, aficionado himself, included, uh, attached on this thing. And it explores two highly speculative but scientifically grounded scientific papers that suggest that life could be almost as old as the Big Bang itself, almost as old as the universe itself. Uh, what if the universe in those early stages, well, I think they're saying that the universe in these early stages was uh, warm enough to be habitable, at least for, for a short period of time, and not just around the stars, where like we're used to it. The universe itself was 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 young enough and warm enough to to possibly harbor life in in every sort of corner of of, of this of of the thing. So 
the, the, the thing that makes us wonder about this is because life emerged on earth quickly and like strangely quickly, given, given, you know, how long most of these things usually take and that, uh, genomes are increasing in size exponentially over billions of years. So we are watching these things get more and more complicated as they go along. Um, so that obviously took a really long time. Why did, why was life so quick? And then evolution so slow, basically. Um, and if life originated in space, potentially this hosty early universe, um, uh, could have seeded our planet, this whole panspermia idea. And that might explain this rapid appearance of life. It's just amazing stuff. Check out the video. A huge thanks to another Tech Bandit supporter with a passion for education. This is Elizabeth with a Z. I have to say Z. Apparently Z doesn't work for her. I would be Z, but she's a Z. Uh, and they just want to let us know about a Raspberry Pi contest where kids can send their code into space. So they can literally run their code on this thing called an Astro Pi, which is a Raspberry Pi that's been specially designed for the International Space Station. Sp they'll get seen by the, the astronauts while they're out there. It's supposed to sort of, you know, give the astronauts a little, little cheer me up. And the kids will get a certificate that shows where the space station was when their code ran. So you get a certificate saying, my code ran in space, and that's where the space station was when it happened. Insanely cool. Thank you so much to Elizabeth for that. Uh, and I've got a link in there. I don't think it's open to Americans. I, I think it may be open to only to the European Space Agency and and Canada and a couple other places. But read the eligibility. I think as long as you've got 50% of your kids from somewhere else, so maybe you can sort of team up online with someone and, and uh, put, put a team together that gets a gets an America involved as well. Um, and speaking of getting together, I've got a couple of hot dates with learning this week. One with Gimpy G, uh, Lance Carr. Lance. Lance has always got these amazing stories and experiences that us damn dirty Abe's, which is which is my my and his term for for non disabled people, we couldn't even imagine. So I really want to sit down with Lance and get sort of the world according to Gimpy G from him in the form of a, a weekly chat that maybe we can format into like a book and that he becomes an author and then he lauds that over us. It'll be horrible. But yeah, Lance and I just really wanted to talk through his experiences and his stories, because they're just they're fascinating. And, uh, I, you know, he seems to feel that, uh, that, uh, between the two of us, we can, we can come up with something interesting for people to listen to, which I, I would definitely agree. You can just, you can hear that guy talk about his experiences forever. They're just, they're amazing. So really looking forward to doing that. Uh, hopefully doing that on a weekly basis for the foreseeable future. But I've also got tech bandit extraordinaire, Lord Chunky, PC guru. Now, this is one of my earliest tech bandits kids who has just become this He's become my my font of knowledge when it comes to PC. He's going to come by because he wants to do some troubleshooting on my errant streaming PC, which 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 packed it in a little while ago. I did a little bit of work on it. I didn't have time to continue, or and I was just getting so frustrated. So he's going to have a look at that, hoping to figure that out. We're also we want to get up to speed on another fabulous tech bandit supporter, Jonathan MLH's CNC machine. We've got this wonderful CNC machine that Jonathan was kind enough to uh, to donate to Tech Bandits. And uh, we are going to be putting that to use with Lord Chunky and I believe some of his robotic stuff, possibly also some of his PC modding stuff that he's doing. So I'm just really excited that that he's found a, a passion for this stuff and uh, and that uh, he's he's willing to come back and uh, and share that with the tech man. So that's that's very cool. So that wraps it up for me. Before you go, please consider visiting techbandits.org. Check out that email of awesome awesomeness. Get yourself subscribed to it. There is also a donation page where you can make donations if you want to throw money at me. There's also a Patreon where you can become a patron of this fine science, technology, engineering, arts, and math adventure. You can also get yourself some cool looking clothes, stickers, that kind of stuff in the old merch department. Please feel free to uh, to partake in any and all of those. I would very, very much appreciate it. I will say be safe, be kind, be brilliant. And until we geek again, a cheerio and uh, that's all.